<laughs> we are now reconvened in open session. We will now consider action on closed session items. Mrs. James. Thank you, Mr. Burdine. I move to appoint uh, Luis Osorio de Armero to the position of Director of Budget. Second. We have a motion by Mrs. James and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Motion passes. Who do we have next here? Mrs. Tossan? Excuse me. Mr. Rice? Mr. President, I move that the Board of Trustees accept the hearing officer's recommendation concerning the level three grievance of Amanda Sisko. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rice and a second by Mrs. James. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Motion passes. Next up are our board member reports. Oh, I'm sorry, next up is our activity report. Excuse me, Mr. Rosenthal. Thank you, Mr. President. In October, the board attended the TASA TASB annual meeting, uh, Las Vegas vacation, oh wait, uh, bond information sessions. <laughs> Excuse him. <laughs> Community-based accountability system work day, annual state of the schools, Fort Bend Chamber of Commerce, policy committee meetings, school visits, CMMS, SLMS, <clears throat> varsity volleyball games, varsity football games, special education advisory committee meetings, educational district advisory team meetings with Representative Rick Miller, Addie Helliger's book day celebration, and student leadership 101. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Next, we will have board member special reports. Mrs. Tossan. Thank you, Mr. Burdeen. I wanted to give us, uh, the board, an update on the work of the Governance Committee. Uh, the Governance Committee was created in 2017, as you probably recall, to help facilitate the work of the board in areas related to board operations, leadership, governance, and sustainability. Tasks originally assigned to the Governance Committee include updating and maintaining the board operating procedures, creation development, facilitation, and maintenance of the Board Leadership Academy, updating and maintaining the superintendent's evaluation instrument, and updating and maintaining the board's self-evaluation instrument. During the 2017-18 school year, Mr. Rice and I served on the Governance Committee. Our board president, Jason Burdine, has assigned himself, Mr. Rice and myself, to serve on the Governance Committee for the current 2018-19 school year. The committee updated the board operating procedures and these were adopted by the board at the July 23rd, 2018 board meeting. The committee updated the superintendent's evaluation instrument and this was adopted by the board at the December, to, uh, December 18th, 2017, 2000, yeah, 17 board meeting. The committee updated the board's self-evaluation instrument and this was adopted by the board at the March 26th, 2018 board meeting. The Board Leadership Academy was developed by the committee and presented to the board at the August 14th, 2017 board meeting. The 2017-18 school year was the inaugural year of the academy. For the first year, participants were invited to the program by the trustees. We had 14 members participating in six training sessions, which included an opening retreat and tour of the district, a trip to the state capitol in Austin, a graduation ceremony and sessions on finance and budget, advocacy, curriculum, teaching and learning, accountability and assessment, and collaborative communities. The inaugural program successfully graduated 14 participants. Feedback from participants was very positive overall. Uh, Veronica Sofer has copies of the evaluations and feedback if anyone would like to see them. The second year for the Board Leadership Academy kicked off with an opening retreat on September 15, 2018. As agreed upon by the trustees last year, an open application process was utilized in selecting participants for the 1819 Academy. The Governance Committee developed an application similar to those used by the Fort Bend Chamber and the Central Fort Bend Chamber Leadership Programs. 
The application was posted and available through the Fort Bend ISD website. All Fort Bend ISD residents were invited to apply via email through School Messenger and a press release and advertisements posted on social media, the Fort Bend ISD website, and printed in the Fort Bend ISD magazine and local news publications. We also announced it at several of our community meetings uh, that we had in uh, the summer and the end of, uh, I guess, after the graduation, the graduation of the last class. Applications were accepted online or they could be printed from the website and turned in and the application period lasted between July 23rd and August 17th. We received a huge number of applicants, 81 applications from all over the district. We were very excited and pleased by the amount of um, interest we had in the program. The committee evaluated each application using the following metrics the time spent volunteering in Fort Bend ISD, the time spent volunteering and working to improve the community, the applicant's experience that will benefit the leadership program, how the applicant will use the leadership experience to advocate for Fort Bend ISD students, and feedback from the two references listed by the applicant. Each applicant was rated on a scale of one to five on each criteria. The committee determined prior to the application period that the district could support a class of 20 participants for the 18-19 school year. Following scoring, the committee selected participants using both an objective and subjective selection process in order to ensure participation from every feeder pattern. The committee first ordered the applicants based purely on evaluation scores and selected 10 applicants who received the highest scores on the evaluation. Those 10 participants make up half the class. The remaining applicants were divided into their separate feeder patterns based on residency and were ordered within their respective feeder pattern by evalu evaluation score highest to lowest. The committee determined which feeder patterns were not represented or were underrepresented by the 10 applicants who were initially selected based purely on scores, then selected the remaining 10 participants from those scoring the highest within the unrepresented or underrepresented feeder patterns. The result was 20 participants representing every feeder pattern except the Willow Ridge feeder pattern because we received no applications from residents living within the Willow Ridge feeder pattern. Following the application and selection process, the governance committee made several recommendations for improving the application process, including better informing the community of the selection process, better informing applicants of the importance of providing a correct address in order to determine residency, the importance of fully answering all application questions since selection is based solely on the application, and the importance of receiving feedback from references because many had no reference submissions. Informing applicants before the deadline if reference submissions are not received so they may contact references and ask for submissions to be made, and allowing the full board the opportunity to review and provide feedback on the application and evaluation metrics prior to start of the application period. The Governance Committee would like to thank the board for allowing us to serve in this capacity and we welcome feedback from the trustees. Thank you, Mrs. Tossan. Do we have any feedback? I'm excited about it. Um, we had the opportunity to be at the opening retreat and uh, we have a great group of very talented people who are really interested and they want to be there. And um, I'm super excited about it. And I heard some great news that Mrs. Tossan and Mr. Rice did a phenomenal job. In the finance. In the finance. So thank you, Mr. Yes, Rice. Yes, we did. <laughs> we, we appreciate that. <laughs> Mr. Rosenthal. Yes, but we have to remember we have to remember that the policy committee still rules. Okay, policy committee rules. All right, Mrs. Haliger, did you have a <clears throat> Yeah, report? I just, yes I do. I just wanted to take the time to um, thank each and every one of you all who supported me in the vision of the Addie's Book Day celebration to um, kick off my, my birthday this year. It was really, really exciting. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed each of you all for coming and making this day just just overly um, 
Fantastic. And um, just special thanks to Tynese Blackman and Pamela Shaw. And there's two other ladies that I don't recall their names right now, one from a Blue Ridge Elementary School and another from, I think, the district. But Stephanie so, Glaze. Stephanie Glaze, yes. And Reba. Cook. Cook. Reba yes, Reba Cook. Cook. Yes, there we go. We got it. We got it. Got it. So I, I would be remiss if I, if, I, if I didn't do that. And just for all you all taking the time out, the community for taking the time out, board members who could make it and those who could not make it, it was just really, really a great day. And, um, you know, I got lots of emails about it and text messages about, about you know, just invite me to the next one. So I ask that, you know, whatever, whatever reason you would like to do it, you know, that we – put some attention to some of our kids and let's have as many readathons as we can. So again, thank you all for making it happen. I think we had over 70 volunteers. So thank you so much. I just toss in, you have a comment? Yeah, so I just wanted to say thank you for doing it, for organizing it and for using your birthday as a way to recognize our students and to particularly shine a spotlight on something that's as important as literacy. So I really enjoyed doing it. I think it was a great day. It was a fantastic turnout. So, um, you know, thanks for using your platform as a way to um, advocate for our kids. I would agree that, Addie, you said it right. Regardless of the purpose, it was a great way to build community and the kids won. So I appreciate you doing that. And once again, thank you, Mrs. Tossan, for your report as well. So I didn't say that. We will now be moving on to our consent agenda, or we will now consider our consent agenda. Does anyone want to remove any items from the consent agenda? Yes, Mr. President. I'd like to remove item, oh my goodness, 11 d five. B. All right. May I have a motion? Mr. Mr. President, I move to approve the entire consent agenda with the one exception of <coughs> item 11D5B as presented. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rice and a second by um, Mr. Rosenthal. We will now consider item 11D5. First, oh, I'm sorry. Well, can we, please, can do I, we have any discussion? Yeah, I'd like to ask one question, please. Mrs. James. Thank you. I'd like to ask a question, uh, Mr. Perez, about um, the remediation and restoration services. And there's a lot of different buildings that had needed some of those. Uh, that's for those following at home, 11 D four C. And I was wondering, do we have any information or could you get information to the board about how many of these buildings had HVAC work done on them? Um, and before the, they needed the restoration? <clears throat> yes, ma'am, actually uh, every one of the campuses other than Hightower High School had HVAC work uh, done to them. And one of, one of the things that we've noticed, that there's been a trend, has been that we've had issues in uh, the locker rooms and storage areas. So what we're doing, and, and is included in our ed specs going forward, is that we're going to be uh, putting dehumidif dehumidification in those areas as we move forward. Because it, uh, it appears that, especially where you have uniforms and they're stacked closer together, you, you tend to have some issues, and uh, so we're, we're looking at that going forward. Okay, so you've done some humidity readings and found that those particular areas are more humid, or? That is correct. Okay, so, all right, well, thank you for working on that, because we, if we're putting money into these um, systems, then we want to be sure that they're working properly and, and they're doing the job, so I'm glad you're checking up on that. Thank you, Mrs. James. Please vote. Motion passes. We will now consider item 11D5B. Mr. President, I move to approve consent agenda item 11D.5.B as presented. Second. We, we have a motion by Mr. Rice and a second by Mrs. James. Do we have discussion? Yes, I have a question. Um, 
So on this item, you have a lot of projects listed um, that are making contributions to the um, to the bond program contingency. Are those all projects that are completed? This is my first question, and I guess closed out. And then, how many other projects do we still have um, outstanding on the 2014 bond? Uh, I can answer the first question. I, these are all completed, and all of the scope has been either done or was found to not be required. But I would have to get back with you on how many are left. I, I know we're in phase three and closing out, but I don't have that exact number right now. Okay, that would be great, because I, I guess I was under the impression that the projects were, um, were pretty much done, and I got kind of embarrassed the other night at a community event when I was told by the community that they were not done. Uh, so I guess I would be interested in knowing that information so that I can speak accurately um, to, to the community. So yes, the documents on the website, if I knew which schools to go to, then I could do that, but I, I, it's voluminous, yep. as you know. We, we so if you could just make a list, that would be great. Yes, ma'am, we can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. James. Please vote. Motion passes. We will now consider action items. First up is 12A1, consider consideration approval of an agreement between Fort Bend ISD and um, ACE Sugarland LLC to conduct 2018-19 commencement exercises at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. Mr. President, I move to approve action item 12A.1. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rice and a second by Mrs. James. Do we have discussion? Mr. Rosenthal. Yes. So, uh, <clears throat> as we've discussed over the past couple of years, there are some trade-offs between uh, this uh, current venue versus the, the old venue that we used for many years. And so, um, again, this, this one has advantages. It has some serious disadvantages, such as schools not being able to bring their bands or choirs or anything like that. The seating arrangements up on stage, just, you know, it's, the ceremony itself is, to, in my opinion, is just not as good as the previous venue. So I just want to know, and, and it doesn't matter to me, it depends what, what the community thinks. So I know that we've done surveys and so I'd like to find out what the feedback is um, and, and what some of the other considerations were for, for this decision. <clears throat> Excuse me, yes, we have two years worth of survey data um, and it was important for us to not only survey the parents and the attendees but also the students and the staff as well. Um, the community, over, uh, the, the overwhelming sentiment was that they liked the venue. The most important thing to them was the proximity to home, and um, they didn't like the improvements last year with the ability to stagger the graduations a little bit more so that they could unify. Our biggest issues previously had been unification, and um, so when we talked about looking at the other venues, their biggest complaints were being driving into Houston. Uh, we did research the other venues, and because of our um, and our calendar, um, the other venues were not available to us. They were either booked and or um, tentatively held for professional sports, and that's just going to be the case because of the way our calendar now falls. Previously, we were a week or two further out, and so we were that much further away from the playoffs, and so that's not the case anymore. Okay. Um, have we thought about any other changes or improvements, you know, for the coming uh, graduations. Yes, yeah, so we have spoken um, with the different high schools and looked again at the survey materials to find out where there were some gaps. Um, this year we have the classes are generally a little bit smaller. 
Uh, last year, I think the obstacle was we had two classes that were ex extremely large, and so that limited what we could do with the stage. And so this year, we've got a little bit more flexibility because the classes are smaller. So I think we'll see some improvements there. Um, and then we've also worked with the venue to decrease some of the time in between the smaller graduations. So that should help a little bit. Um, but in terms of looking at the data, we are hitting on all the things that our community values in a venue and in an experience. Okay, great. And will we still need three days to to go through the, all the all the ceremonies? We will. Okay. Well, okay. Um, so we um, are still going to utilize the three the three days. Um, our tentative schedule is to have two on Thursday, starting at four. So that would be different. Um, from last year, so we're actually moving it further into the evening time. Last year we had three. Uh, we would have four on Friday, and we would go from 9.30 to 9.30, and then on Saturday we would do five, and we would do our two smaller classes on that day to accommodate it and, and be able to squeeze in that time, and that'll reduce that transition time as well, because the, the two of those classes are really small. And we looked at not only the data of the, the class that was graduating, but also the last two years' worth of data for attendees and guests, because sometimes the actual class size didn't correlate with the attendees, and so we took all of that into consideration as well. Okay. Well, great. I'm glad you guys put a lot of thought into that. Again, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. You know, it's whatever the community wants, so that's fine. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Mrs. Tossan. So I had some similar concerns, so I'm going to ask a couple of clarifying questions. You said we're going to do two on Thursday beginning at 4 o'clock. We're going to do four on Friday from 9 to 9. And then five on Saturday, is that also from 9 to 9? So Friday would be 9.30, um, starting at 9.30, ending at 9.30 on Saturday. I'm sorry, on Friday. And on Saturday, we would start at 8 a.m., ending at 9.30. Okay. Um, so I've expressed the last couple of years, like Mr. Rosenthal said, I'm really disappointed that the bands and the choirs and those kinds of things don't get to participate. Have we found a solution for that or are we going to be able to? We have not been able to find a solution for that. Um, one of the issues and part of the feedback that we've gotten from parents is their desire to have more tickets available to them for guests and so that limits what we can do for bringing in additional groups to perform uh, because that takes space away from the bowl. Okay, so that was going to be my next question: is what if, what are tickets looking like? Because I've already I'm already getting a lot of questions and feedback about the limitations. The, on the ticket process will be exactly what it was last year. Um, there may be some modifications. Last year, none of the none of the graduations quote unquote sold out. We were able to accommodate all of the requests. Um, the year before, we were a little more strict with it being our first year. We had uh, we wanted to make sure we were making room for everybody. We also worked very closely with the Smart Financial Center and the Fire Marshal to identify overflow. So this year, I feel confident we'll be able to do what we did last year, which was accommodate the request for larger ticket needs. So how many tickets are graduates going to get? Um, at a bare minimum, they'll get eight. Most classes will get up to 10. And then you work with families families who have additional needs okay um, the, and my last question is related to where the trustees sit um, I've made some suggestions about being able to maybe extend the stage move us over are, are y'all considering that are we working to get us out from in front of the graduates Yes, we are looking at that. This year, again, we have some more flexibility because we're not having graduating classes upwards of 700 students, so we're going to have some more space that we'll be able to reconfigure. We're working with the Smart Financial Center right now to see what that would look like, um, but we know that that's a priority, and we want to make sure that we've got our students front and center, and so we'll continue to make adjustments to make improvements. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Toss and Mrs. James. So thank you. Two follow-up questions. So... Uh, the the Saturday schedule sounds really really long uh, and really difficult for the trustees and for the administration is there a, was there any consideration or could there be consideration to doing it more of a three four four we did and layout? We did, and based on feedback that we got, um, not only from the board, but also from the campus administration, the Thursday, because we're still in school, was more difficult, and so the desire was to not have three on Thursday, uh, which was 
what we had last year. So based on last year's feedback, we made that adjustment for this year to accommodate those requests. Okay. What we did this year that's different from last year, though, is we've reduced the amount of time in between the graduations, and so it should be a little bit more noticeable. Because I was thinking last year I should have brought my returns to go back to the mall or something. I could have had a lot of time between graduations. The breaks, the breaks were a little bit more last year. Um, again, it was a, a, some trial and error, but the police, uh, the Sugarland Police Department working with um, the Smart Financial Security and Fort Bend ISD Police felt it was important for safety reasons to be able to manage that um, the outgoing graduating class and the incoming graduating class and so their time was uh, very restricted in how they wanted to manage that again we have two years worth of data now so this year they were a little bit more flexible in allowing us to reduce some of those times um, but they were still very clear that they needed enough time to get all the traffic in and out in a safe manner so it does add some time in between okay and I but I do like the fact that the graduates are reunited with their families at the venue because um, that's I think that's a much better way to to help the families to feel part of you know for the pictures and, and family members and kids having pictures together and things like that so I think that Absolutely. I think that that's a good point and then uh, my last question would be when uh, is this information or when will information be available to parents uh, and to the community for those who might be planning uh, for their families? So we're going to be sharing this information with principals tomorrow and we'll be releasing it to the community after that. Um, we've already got uh, the information uh, built and so we'll be sharing it. They'll get, we'll post it on the district website in our traditional forms and the campuses will also be getting it to share with their campuses, with their parents. Can we please make sure that we um, communicate YouTube's another viable option for people to attend? Um, I've got a, quite a few people that really like that option, and I think that we can promote that a little bit more as a, as a real option. Um, not everyone in every culture expects to be at the graduation, and so um, I think it's just a wonderful tool that we can help eliminate people at the, at the center. So if we could add that I think that'd be helpful to, to families absolutely that's been very successful last year we had at one graduation we at one point we had over 1500 people watching um, I think it was Ridge Point graduation so that was very exciting that's incredible we want to keep that going please vote motion passes next we have consideration and approval of an interlocal agreement with the city of Sugarland regarding the discovery of human remains at the James Reese CTE Center. Mr. President, I move to approve action item 12B1 as presented. We have a motion by Mr. Rice and a second by Mrs. Tossan. Do we have any comments or any discussion? Hearing none, oh, Mrs. James. I think I had a question, but I'm not, I am not finding it, so. If, did it, um, what number is this? This is 12, so there we go, it gets here. Um, so on the agreement, this is maybe a question for somebody in legal. On the agreement on page three, it talks about obligation, party obligations after internment. internment. Number three says the city will consider future requests for additional property in the existing old Imperial Prison Cemetery and adjacent city park as needed for memorialization and education purposes. What is that? What does that mean? I'm sorry, I don't know who to look at. Oh, thank you, Mr. Scamardo. Uh, yes, it was simply a recognition. The mic's not on. It was a recognition that we wanted to, if we wanted to engage the city about future uh, memorialization, that they would be open to receive that. So there's no commitment to them other than they would consider. 
Okay, so it's just saying that we might consider talking about that in the future, and this would be the avenue for opening the door, that they're agreeing to at least listen to us if we came to them. That, that, that's correct. Right. Okay, and so then this agreement is going um, after, after we vote on it, assuming we approve it, then it would go on to the city, to the city of Sugarland. Is that correct? Correct. We've been told that it will be on their agenda for uh, Tuesday week, October the 23rd. Okay. And they'd consider the same exact one. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, they've seen this draft. They have given their staff, their city attorneys, given approval um, for us to present it tonight. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Smarto, for your work on this. Thank you. Please vote. Motion passes. Next up, we have future board meeting agenda items. Yes, sir. As a reminder, um, we meet again next week to conduct the superintendent's summative um, annual evaluation. And the Monday after that, on the 29th, we meet to conduct team building, where we're going to focus on um, our, our community-based accountability system. So that's going to be a good team building session with the E-team and board. Um, in November, we're going to provide an update on the profile of a graduate and the work we've done to integrate that into the curriculum and kind of where we're headed there. And we're also going to spend a lot of time in November on the um, district and campus improvement plans and their performance objectives. Um, and then there's some key contracts we'll be bringing forward as well related to the um, 18 bond. Thank you, Dr. Dupree. May I have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. <laughs> we are adjourned. <laughs>